This is NCC Unplugged. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. I'm Allison Murray, the Director of Children's Ministries here at Norwin Christian Church. And I'm so excited to be hosting this episode today when we're going to talk about women's ministries here at NCC. So I'm glad to introduce Aaron Persall and Carol Hartman, my guests today. And we're just going to go ahead and get started and chat a little bit about what we have to offer in women's ministries here. So Aaron and Carol, thank you for being here today. And if you could just introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about how you're connected to women's ministries here. Well, I'm Erin Persall, and I am blessed to lead a women's small group, and um, I've also been part of The Fountain. Um, it is a, it's kind of once a quarter, um, but not strictly once a quarter, but it's a gathering for women on a Saturday, and I also help with the ladies' retreat. Hi, I'm Carol Hartman. I um, I have been to The Fountain. Um, I've attended some women's small groups. Uh, me and my husband are hosting a small group now for young families. Um, and I've also done the women's retreats as well. So yeah, that's great. Thank you. With a church of our size, we really do have a variety of opportunities for women to get involved. So Erin, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the variety of things that we have in that realm of women's ministries? Mm-hmm. So the small groups, there's more than seven. I can't remember the exact number, but there's more than seven weekly groups that gather, and they gather both at the church building and at people's homes, and they gather different times of the day, and there's different topics that they study. Um, So that's an opportunity for women to plug in just with women on a weekly basis. The fountain, as I mentioned, is kind of like a quarter, once a quarter type of gathering. And it's for all women. Um, You don't have to sign up or anything. You can just come. You can bring neighbors, friends. And it's a time where we gather for worship, teaching, a sharing of a testimony and times of prayer. Um, And then the retreat is like a once a year gathering where there we we go to a different location and it's um, you definitely need to sign up ahead of time. But um, it's where it's open to all adult ladies. So we have it kind of set up where there's weekly things they can plug in with once a quarter and once a year. Um, And then we also do one thing for all ladies who have ever been on any retreat um, is to gather and we call a mini retreat. And that's kind of um, it's a lower key, but it's a time for us to spend time with the Lord and just get refueled that way. So we try to provide those opportunities, not just weekly and not just once a year, but to continually be being fed um, as women with, with the Lord. That's really great. I think I've, I've noticed too that sometimes um, various women will get plugged in in different ways. So someone that like a weekend retreat seems maybe a little bit too, you know, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. They might come first to the fountain. It's just Mm -hmm. that one time thing. Mm -hmm. And then they start to realize, wow, this is something I want more of in my life. And that Mm -hmm. might lead to a retreat or that Mm -hmm. might lead to participating weekly in a small group. Yeah. So um, Carol, do you have anything to add just maybe from your own experiences? Um, yeah, as a mom with, um, so I have two little ones who are four and five. And um, so for us, we weren't sure, are we going to be able to get really involved and plugged in? And ironically, I joined Aaron's small group whenever my daughter was a toddler And I went and the first day I was like, oh gosh, I called my husband after I said, Brian, this is exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. And ironically, life just kind of took me in that path at that time. I was like, Aaron, I'm not going to be able to come back to this because I just didn't have the time at that time with my children. Mm -hmm. But NCC has really allowed us to get plugged in in various ways. And it's grown now that my children are getting a little older too, Mm -hmm. that there's always childcare for so many things like our small groups and um, just different ways to get involved in the church. So that's helped us to grow too. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I think in the realm of women's ministries, we also have kind of those things that happen almost incidentally. Mm -hmm. Maybe you make a relationship with someone at one of these events, and then that ends up being someone that you might, you know, get together with your kids and and have them over for lunch or play in the backyard or um, might create some sort of a mentorship relationship. So even outside of 
these like three main things that we're talking about. Um, there are also just these relationships that form connections with women. And I think that that makes us richer as a congregation as well. Yeah. I want just um, to add, I know whenever I did, I also did Allison's small group too um, last spring and I made some connections there with moms who I had met in the church, but it just took it to another level. Um, and now one of those moms comes over to our house almost every week. And, um, me and my husband, we, we homeschool and, um, this mom was also interested in homeschooling. So it's been this relationship that's kind of just kept building and growing, but we wouldn't have met each other had we not done that, that small group. So it was really special to have that connection that's carried on. Mm -hmm. So that's really great. I think that that kind of highlights one of the important goals of our ministry is just to create those connections. But what are some of the other goals that we have here at NCC in regards to women's ministries? I say that we have like three three goals. The first is to feast. So um, when I think about Jesus's followers, the people that were closest to him when he was walking around, women were included and he loved women just like he loved men. And when we gather as women to study, it's just, it's different. And so we're blessed when we're in mixed gender um, gatherings to study God's word. And it's also special when we're just with women. Um, I think for me, it's like I can let my guard down a little bit more and be a little bit more personal where I don't feel as com- comfortable doing that um, in a mixed setting. Um, so feasting on God's word and receiving what he has to give us. Um, and when we do that together, we're able to learn from his word directly, but we're also able to learn through each other. So feasting um, with him. And then second is fellowship of sisters, um, where we can, we are sharing, we're intercessing for each other, we're contending for each other. We um, were reminded that we're not alone. We're encouraging each other. And um, I've even been helped with like, oh, you shared about this. Can you tell me about that doctor? You know, so like connections that are not, they have nothing to do with the Bible, but they have to do with life. Um, So the fellowship and that encouragement we get to share with each other. And then the last part is, because we're feasting and we're fellowshipping as sisters, then we're fueled up and like ready to pour out and invite other people in, into knowing God more and into this opportunity. So that's, I think the main three things. I think those are really great. I like how you use the alliteration to help us remember <laughs> them. So um, I just think because all three of us have been involved in a variety of different ways, I just love to chat for a few minutes about the ways that women's ministries have impacted our lives. And Carol, you've mentioned some of these already, mm-hmm. but I would just love mm-hmm. to spend a little bit more time um, talking specifically about how we each have been impacted by the mm-hmm. women's ministries here. Um, so I know for me, um, when my husband and I had our children, um, not a lot of our friends had children and even my sister was just kind of, she had just had her babies whenever, uh, we started coming to NCC. Um, and we prayed a lot about that. I was like, I really want my kids to grow up wanting to come to church and loving church and building those friendships. Um, And I love watching all of these families come and grow here. And it's so whenever we prayed about this, I had a friend from another church on the other side of the state. And she was like, oh, do you have a mops group around you? And I was like, no. And I was looking it up. And at the time, we just I couldn't find one. And whenever I saw that NCC was starting mops, I was like, oh, this is great. This is the perfect opportunity. So I did it the first year. And we built so many relationships. And now those moms in the church, their kids that were babies then are the little Mm -hmm. kids now, including mine. (laughs) And those babies that, um, and now there's all these new babies too. And so the second year, um, I kind of give myself a faith goal to work on. Like I tried to be very intentional about my faith. And my goal last year was to work on my prayer. And so when the opportunity came through MOPS to, they needed somebody on the steer team for um, like leading prayer and whatnot. I was like, okay, I'll do it. And I was kind of nervous, um, but I would, I, I did it and I stepped into that role. But I remember the one day, 
uh, to the other moms, I was doing prayer and I wrote it down because I was nervous to pray in front of so many people. Mm -hmm. I could do it in this little group. Sure. But to do it in front of so many moms who I highly respected, I was like, oh gosh, what if, what if I say things not so eloquently? Um, and I, I wrote it down and I told two of the other moms, I said, don't laugh at me. I'm reading it. <laughs> um, and I started the prayer and one of the other moms, she like put her hand on my shoulder because she could tell I was just nervous. So it was just that encouragement mm -hmm. that came from that. Um, and then kind of on the retreats, what you had said about it being all women, it's, it's kind of interesting to see. I know my first year I went into it and I was like, oh gosh, how am I going to relate to these other women in our breakout groups, the smaller groups? And every single person was just so vulnerable in speaking. Mm -hmm. And it just led from one woman to another of all different ages and life or pathways in life. And everybody kind of just opened up and connected in ways you wouldn't expect. And on a Sunday when you walk in and you see everybody and you're like, oh, everybody is talking to everybody. And mm -hmm. maybe that's a Sunday you're a little quieter. I don't know. It just, mm -hmm. it lets you see how you connect to all of those people in a bigger church. And it makes it feel so relational without losing, without losing all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a big impact for me. Um, I have always really loved um, Titus two in regards to um, what mentorship can look like in the church. So I'm going to read um, Titus two, three through five says in the same way, older women are to be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not slaves to excessive drinking. They are to teach what is good so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands and to love their children and to be self-controlled, pure workers at home, kind and in submission to their husbands so that God's word will not be slandered. And so my experience in women's ministries has reminded me of the importance of, of those ministries being intergenerational. And there's definitely a time and a place for age group specific ministry like MomCo or um, other small groups that we've had. And I've been a part of those and they've been a huge blessing, but I have most grown mm -hmm. in the opportunities where it really has been um, a mix of ages coming together. And so um, obviously in those situations, we always assume that it's the older that are teaching the younger. But I've been in situations as, as I'm aging and my children are growing um, where actually I've had the opportunity to learn from the younger women. And so last spring I led um, a small group of women. It was mostly young moms um, my children are now 14 and 17 and these moms had babies and toddlers. And so I felt like I was the older person in the room. Um, but my, the, the things that I gained from spending time with them, it wasn't just me being able to say, oh, now when you're mothering your toddler, this is what you should do. I, um, was really impacted by, um, the desire of these moms to raise their children to know Jesus, which then makes me more desirous of that, even with my older children. And then also I can think of one mom in particular who just encourages me so much um, that even though she has little children, she is always seeking out how she can become closer and closer with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really encourage people to seek out those opportunities where you can be with a variety of people, whether they're, you know, different age, different stage, different lifestyle. It just allows you to grow. Um, and that's what makes the kingdom of God so amazing is the uniquenesses that he put in each one of us. So I've really loved um, those opportunities in women's ministries just to get to know so many different people from so many different, you know, ages and stages. And that's helped me grow in my faith. How about you, Erin? Um, so I say that for me, um, our small group has had like a group me connection. And so um, I'm not real techie, but group me I've been able to do. Um, and it's just been a way for us to stay connected throughout the week, regardless of the hour of the day. Um, and that has been beneficial because 
in the middle of the night when you have something scary or something bad happening and you, but you don't need, you don't need somebody else there, but you do need their prayer. So it's been beneficial to know that I could message these people and that when they get up to do whatever they're doing, they see it and they start praying. So having that prayer connection has been a a blessing to me. Um, And I think that for knowing that I can lean on others and that those others are following God so that like we're linking arms and I'm not by myself. And I know that you're following God too. So that has been helpful. And I know that's not like a, like on this day, this happened, but it's more of a like living life thing. Mm -hmm. And um, like one time we had something scary and unexpected happen with one of our babies and that's who I like, that's who I call. Like Mm -hmm. I call and say, can you come to right now to my house? And they say, yes, Mm -hmm. I will do that. And so knowing that, um, you know, they're family and it's God's family and that we're looking out for each other, pointing each other to him. So that's been, that's my answer. Absolutely. (laughs) No, I love, I love that so much. And I've learned so much, um, as, cause I've been part of those group me's before (laughs) and just, um, to have ladies type their prayers out, not just to say, I'm praying for you, but to actually put the text of the prayer is so encouraging. And that's led me, that was something I never really did before, but it's led me to then do that with other friends Mm -hmm. when I know they're going through Mm -hmm. something, because to hear exactly what you're going before the throne of God with, um, is so powerful. So I love that. And I've reread them like, you know, when like yes. this is a season where this is applying, not just today. So I like I keep it and I read it again because <laughs> it's, it's just beneficial. It's helpful. So. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, I think all of this um, discussion that we've had has probably made a lot of women want to get involved in women's ministries, hopefully here at NCC. So we do have a lot of opportunities that just kind of cycle all year round. So please feel free to reach out to us at Mm -hmm. any point in the church office. Um, We would love to be able to get you plugged in. But ladies, if we could just talk specifically about a few dates that are coming up. Um, So Carol, what's kind of an important date that we need to know if people would like to get involved in kind of a a low, the first low commitment kind of way? (laughs) Um, so we talked about the women's retreat and one of the things that I remember from our last retreat that, um, at the end, Aaron had said, you're going to go home from this. And you, you use the analogy of the washing machine. Like we just went through Mm -hmm. this heavy duty cycle (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you're feeling clean and refreshed Mm -hmm. and and you do, but -hmm. then you get a few months out of the retreat Mm -hmm. and life is there and it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, coming at you. And like any of us, cause we're not perfect. Mm-hmm. We, um, we feel like we need that refreshment. And so we talked about the fountain. Um, I know for me, I found that's a great way to just feel that like, mm-hmm. like the quick cycle, <laughs> <laughs> but you also feel all of that, um, goodness of being around those women as mm-hmm. well. Um, and so the next one is the next fountain is December 7th at 9am. There's going to be a virtual teaching by Jennifer Rothschild, Um, and there'll be a pitch in brunch after. Um, so you can bring a dish Mm -hmm. and, um, I did the Christmas one last year Mm -hmm. and it was so good. I, I will be there. And I am (laughs) telling you to like, my advice, um, is, is come just whatever Mm -hmm. you can do, do with these women's ministries. Cause whether it's the fountain or anything else, it's, you're always going to walk away feeling refreshed and connected. Yeah. And then, um, it's the time of year. If you're listening kind of live, when we first put this out, it's the time of year where we're we're beginning to look ahead Mm -hmm. towards the women's retreat, which is kind of that bigger thing that Mm -hmm. we do once a year. Mm -hmm. So Erin, can you give us a little bit of details about that? Yes. So the next ladies retreat will be May 15 through 17. And if you've been there before, um, just know that it's a little different because it's after Mother's Day. Um, So it's the 15th through the 17th. And we're going to go to White Sulphur Springs in Bedford, Pennsylvania. Um, the theme is God's faithfulness and the title is always. So we're going to be spending time with Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 and talking about God's faithfulness, who he is 
and how he, how he is faithful, and he's also faithful in what he does. So that's what we're going to spend our time focusing on. And um, the registration is open right now, so you can register online. And if you come to a worship in person, you can also register in person. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we have loved the facility that we've used the mm. past couple of years, but I'm, I've been looking online at White Sulphur Springs mm-hmm. and I'm super excited. It's yeah. so beautiful. It's so, so pretty. I'm really so looking, quiet. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to yeah. that. So is there anything else that you would like people to know about women's ministries here? I would say that we want all women to know that they're invited, all women, because God invites all women and we want to invite all women. So, you know, and when we say adult women, that means, you know, officially like 18 and out of high school. So if you're 18 and older and out of high school, you are welcome. And we would love to have you plug in with us um, and bring your gifts because we are all family and we benefit when you come um, and prayerfully you benefit from being with us. So um, we want all people to know that they're invited. Absolutely. Yeah. I would just mm-hmm. add to that. Don't, don't be afraid to jump in with that. I know mm-hmm. my first year with the retreat. Um, so my husband and I, um, we loved our church before we came to NCC. Um, but as far as the retreats, it was, there wasn't a lot of younger families and whatnot. And I was always like, Oh, should I, should I, um, and I, I jumped in on that retreat. And like I said, you'll be surprised by the ways that you'll connect to so many people and you can mm-hmm. learn from those older generations and younger generations. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I always say there's some people who are like, Oh, but I don't really know anybody else going. And I'm like, well, that's a great opportunity. Like, don't think like, what if I don't know anybody or what if I do it and I'm just by myself? You won't mm-hmm. be by yourself. <laughs> like when my first year, everybody came up and talked and then mm-hmm. you went to church and every Sunday, one of those women approaches you yeah. and talks to you and you just build those connections. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. don't be afraid to just jump in and do it. Mm-hmm. So for sure. That's what I always try to tell people when they get involved for the first time. Now there are people that when you walk in the door on Sunday morning, they're going to say, I know you, I've met you. And there's just something so Mm -hmm. amazing about seeing a friendly face and making that connection. And that's when people start to know that they belong. And so you have to take that first step out. Mm -hmm. But once you do, those connections just make themselves so apparent. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited um, to get to know some more women in this coming year. So at the end of every NCC Unplugged, when we have guests, we like to ask the guest a special question. So today my question is, what is a book that you have enjoyed recently that pertains to either women's ministry or discipleship, um, mentoring, something that kind of goes along with what we talked today? (laughs) Um, So... One of my favorite uh, Bible studies, um, I get a lot from the Daily Grace Company, um, and we do little cards and stuff with our kids from there. But there's one I got about a year ago, well, a year and a half, two years ago, actually now, but I go back to it all the time. It's called Gospel-Centered Motherhood. Um, Again, mine are four and five. And so there's a lot of questions that come up like, well, how much do I push or when don't I, or whenever life is really stressful, like how do I balance that and whatnot? Um, but even at our MOPS, now MOMCO, um, meetings, I reference it all the time. And I think one of my favorite things from it was, um, I talked to a mom at MOPS who said, we were supposed to talk about, you know, when we felt like we were last on fire with Mm. like in our faith. And she had said before I had children and she was like, and I want to get back to it, but life is just so busy and life is so stressful. And I thought of her the moment that I read that, like this one section of this study, and I think about it for myself and I hear so many moms say it. And it said, you know, we talk about seasons of life and it said, you can have seasons of life, but as a Christian, you don't want to have seasons of life without Christ in them. Because Mm -hmm. if it's a hard season, he is going to get you through it. That fellowship Mm -hmm. in like-minded I always say mamas, <laughs> like mm-hmm. minded mamas. They're going to help you get through that. Whenever you have something really heavy, I remember we went through something last year um, with the loss of a family member. I was out of town a little bit. Um, and I went to uh, Jeff and I said, you know, what do you do? Like whenever, like sometimes I go to pray and I don't have those words. And I like, I know what I want to pray and I know mm-hmm. what's on my heart. He said, find a woman in the church that you really trust 
and that knows your heart and see if they'll pray those prayers for you. And it made me think back to that study and the keeping Christ in every season because it's hard in those harder times and it's easier in the easier Mm -hmm. times, but every season has to have him in it. So it's one that I go back to a good bit. So thank you. Um, I wrote my title down because I knew I was going to forget it. (laughs) Sitting at the feet of Rabbi Jesus and the authors Anne Spangler and Lois Verberg. But um, that book, uh, I learned about the title from a Christian McClellan study. And, but the book is all about understanding Jesus in his like Jewishness and understanding. And I find that one fascinating, but also helping me understand so more of the why and how to live that life. So one of the things that I really took from that book is like, um, at, there's a Hebrew word, but <laughs> have a ream, I think is how you say it, but um, like having your closest people that are following Jesus with you so that when those things happen, you know who you can lean on because you know they're, fa- like they're facing God and you know that you they can hold on to you when you feel like things are squarely or, and that can be with your faith. It can be with circumstances. It can be with, you know, anything in life. Um, but sitting at the feet of Rabbi Jesus has been helpful to me to understand Jesus more from like in his time um, and how that relates to me in today. And so that has trickled into like how things work at the ladies retreat that has trickled into like, Oh, this would be helpful for us to do things this way because that we're sitting more at his feet instead of our to-do list. Um, and, and helping my mind go from, we live in the Western part of the world where Jesus was Eastern world. So like having a different, we have a different lens just because this is where we live. Um, so helping me see more from his lens and how, okay, how can, how can this help when we are in our small group or when we're at the fountain, what can we do that this is where we live, but how can we think more in line with how Jesus was teaching and how he walked out life? So That's great. That's super insightful. Well, ladies, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your insights and your, um, just comments about, um, the different things that we have for women here at Norin Christian Church. So I really encourage you to get involved. You can always check out norinchristianchurch.com slash events for any of the things that are upcoming or reach out to us anytime in the church office and we will help you get plugged in to the thing that will connect you both more to Jesus, but also to the women here at NCC. Thank you for joining us for another episode of NCC Unplugged. Thank you for tuning into NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please be sure to rate and review it and share it with your friends and family. If you are interested in learning more about Norwin Christian Church, visit our website at norwinchristianchurch.com. We also invite you to join us at NCC for one of our three services, Sundays at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. and Thursdays at 7 p.m. We have engaging classes for all ages, ensuring there is something meaningful for everyone in our church community. Thanks once again for listening, and we hope you have a great week.